Hello everybody and welcome to another episode oh, of Mix Mama. Mama. Got my little Riley boy here today, it's Sunday, a um, bit windy today. Um, Mrs P's at work, got my little Riley boy here as I say, and we're just sort of chilling out in the shed. I've got a repair and service to do on a Honda HRX 476. Be coming up very, very shortly. Um, this is your first time watching Mix Mers, hit your subscribe button, whack the old bell, set notifications to all. And that way you'll be told when I've done a video or two on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6pm at UK time. But before we get down and dirty, guess what? what? I've got a parcel for you. This parcel, um, I've already opened it because I always open um, any stuff that comes through for Riley, um, just to make sure there's nothing nasty in there because you just don't know what's about this day and age. Um, but this has come from um, a, a Nil F is what his YouTube channel or YouTube name. Um, he's a, a fellow subscriber, and I believe this has actually come from his wife. She um, sends um, bits and pieces to, to young children and um, at church groups, what have her, sends in sweets and bits and pieces. So this is for you. So. Let me hold this end. You can you can have a you can have a little dig around. Put it all out in one go. See you there. That's it. I guess a bit of the old address. There you go. Right. So I have already opened it up because I'll just like to double check what's, okay. what's on it. Yep. There you go. It does. What have you got? I got fish. Yeah, you know, all them ones. Fish stickers. Uh, a book. Uh, four football ones. Yeah. And uh, a car. Cars and boats and helicopters. Uh, yeah. Animals. Animals, good talking. Dinosaurs. 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 Lots of dinosaurs. Dinosaur. Yeah. Dinosaur. Yeah. Dinosaur. Dinosaur. Uh, hero. Hang on. Hang on. I got hero. Superheroes. Yeah. I got power, power, power. Superheroes, cool. Power, 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 and zap. You got some stickers. Yeah. We like stickers, don't we? Yeah. What else? What else? Uh, sorry, I can't. There's a letter. Yeah. Daddy, read the letter in a minute. Nice handwriting too. I got a. Ooh. What you got? Let's see, guys. Let's see, guys. You got a. Oh, fuck. Nice, are. Shark! Nice, shark. Don't touch nice people. A die. as strong as you used to be, oh yeah, yeah, have a dig there you go, that's better. What have you got there? Two eggs for me! Two eggs for you, not two eggs, there's six in there. So you've got sweets. Sweets, yeah, you are your sweets, I yeah. Sweets. Well, we are, Riley Boy only eats Kinder Egg Surprises, doesn't he? He doesn't eat Harry Bow's Jelly Sweets, Candy Sweets, he only <laughs> eats this particular type of chocolate. Um, he likely he's got a little toy in there as well, so. he got six Kinder Eggs, that's absolutely fantastic. Keep going. Guys, no. I got dinosaur book. A dinosaur book. Animals. It's on the front. It says um, Animal World stickers. So actually, it's, it's a sticker book. So what you can do is in here, I expect there's some stickers, and what you've got to do is you've got to put the right sticker yeah. on the right dinosaur bit. That's yeah. pretty cool. So Riley likes that. And there's a little story in here as well. We should read at bedtime. It's super cool. Super and job. Finally, guys. And finally, guys. Uh, it it's an empty book, so what you can do is you can do some drawing in there, so it's called a scrapbook. You can do some drawing in there and put your other stickers in there as well. How cool is that? Yeah. So that's cool. So we've got, little, we've got a little note here. Daddy. Uh, it says, hi Riley, um, I saw the painting that you did for your dad and how happy it made him. Um, what a clever boy you are. Um, it was great. I bought some goodies for being such a good boy. I really hope you like them. Lots of love and hugs from Michelle. That is Neil F's wife. So what do you say to Michelle? It's Auntie Shell. Not Auntie Shell. It's a it's, it's not a uh, Miss Shell. Same words. It's a Shell. Yeah. Thank you, Shell. It's a Shell. Shell. Thank you, Shell, for my lovely bits. It's Auntie Shell bit. Thank you, Shell, for my lovely bits. So we're super super happy. So a lovely little um, card there as well. So thank you very much. What so else? That, that's brilliant. That's that's that. What else? That you've got loads. You have got some chocolate and some uh, drawing in there. That's oh. cool. They're daddy's bits and pieces, but they're, they're daddy's key rings and what have you. That's Me what they too. are. So, okay, so thank you very much, um, um, Michelle and Neil F. Much appreciated um, for sending my little Riley Boy a little package and showing a little bit of love and affection towards them. That, that's exactly what this channel is all about. So, without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's have a look at this Honda HRX 476. It's got a drive problem um, and it needs a service as well, I'm led to believe. OK, 
Okay, so here is the Honda HRX 476 on a 2014 um, model. Um, this machine actually um, used to belong to me, and I sold it to the fella about two seasons ago. He's a professional grass um, cut and lawn care guy. Um, he used to run run of the mill equipment, and uh, he, he was forever coming in uh, stuff overheating and breaking down, or what have you. So. I said, mate, you've got to pay out some money um, and get some proper equipment. So that's what you've done. And uh, this is the first time it's been back in about two seasons. It might have had the odd, the odd bit here and there, but uh, it hasn't had a service in two seasons, that I do know. Um, so it's in for um, a drive issue. The driver stopped working and also um, a service um, does not have one. And the air filter suggests that as well. The air filter was absolutely um, knackered. So I've turned the fuel off already. That fuel has gone. Um, and the machine won't idle correctly either. Apparently you, you can start it on choke, it runs flat out, but you won't, it won't idle back. Um, it cuts out, so it could be a carburetor job, we'll have to wait and see what happens, but with a new air filter, it may pick itself up. But initially, this one's in for no drive. Now on these um, Honda HRX 476, we've got a metal roller, which is chain driven via a gearbox, which is on the belt via a pulley. Um, can be quite expensive to to get these done especially if it is a gearbox i'm hoping it's not a gearbox um he said it, the drive just stopped bang that tells me it's not the gearbox um which is good i think uh, but we need to see what it is um there are other bits and pieces that go on these machines which will also stop the drive working as well by a belt off or something like that so we'll have a little look at it anyway so the fuel's turned off um I'm not worried about tipping it up because it will it will have um, the oil taken out of it at some point today. But we, I want to run it up once I've uh, tried to fix it, see how we get on. So let's have a quick little look. For those of you in America, you don't often see these type of machines. They've got a metal roller on the back of these, big metal roller for striping. Don't have the additional kit on the back. Um, so it's got sort of a sleek design um, with a skirt on it as well. Um, it's got the rotor clutch on it as well, or the blade break as some people sometimes call it. So you can empty the bag without the blade spinning. So. Uh, good machine, uh, well, well worth a, an investment. So the first thing we want to do is get a parts tray in. That'll be number one. Um, all my bits of equipment currently is, are out on uh, on different parts. So I have to use a non-magnetic tray today. So I've got the uh, stuff that punch in bit, uh, stuff that punch and ramps and markers in bits and pieces. So all my magnet trays will be in use currently. So I've got two Phillips screws at the back just here and here uh, on the back height adjustment and this will um, expose the rear roller um, drive cog assembly so they come off just like so and then you've got a 10 mil um 10 mil just there where's my d walk gone there it is i want 10 on there what's on there that's a 12. let's get rid of that Let's get a 10, I think it's a 10. I might, I might be a 12 actually. It is a 12, there you go. Let's put a 12 on. And that, that goes in there. Let's make sure you are getting all of this yet. You are. And there's a little tiny metal washer on here also, which you want to try and retrieve. And then this then will lift up and it comes off little housing just there. there's a little tiny uh, three piece clip just there that comes off okay so we haven't got a chain on let me bring you in so as you can see the chain is off currently um no biggie so that looks like it's pushed further out to what it should be that main front cog that should be in a bit yeah okay um what we need to do is tip this machine up on its side and investigate as to the reason why that chain came off. Um, there's a tension spring here which so needs to take off as well. Um, I'll, show, I'll show that in a bit when I get it off. Um, so let's get it up on its side and then we'll have a little look as to why the reason behind why this chain came off because it should be all tensioned up. So let's have a little look. Right, with the machine on its side, I'm going to get a pair of long nose, long nose snippers, a long nose um, tweezers and there's a spring just up here, which is of a tension pulley. And you gotta just unhook that, like so. That then comes out. There's a little tiny spring there, that comes off. And the longest bit goes up the top end, okay? 
I'll show you how to refit that. There's a 10 mil bolt here to remove. You've got to take these bolts off of here. Uh, they will probably be something like a 14, because it's a, a Chinese, Japanese machine. They don't have a 13 mil on these. It's unlucky, apparently. Um, so there should be a 14 on there. That all comes off. Got a spacer on there as well. Yeah, it blades well battered. It goes in there, in the part straight. Uh, we haven't got a touch of a clutch assembly. Uh, I want a 12 mil next to remove um, just two of the um, engine bolts. That one there, that was loose, and that one there. Good. So they come off, and then a little tiny 10 mil up the top. Move this chain is, let's move a chain out of the way. There's a 10 mil bolt just here. Oh. There it goes. Pair of long nose snippers in there. I'm gonna track that bolt out. That's a long shoulder bolt. Take that out. Um, that one, that one, that one. Okay, now with a Phillips screwdriver, you can now put this into here. That releases a catch at the back, tip it, tip it towards the machine, that will then drop out. So the grass. So up in here you've got your, your drive belt, which is on the pulley, which is good, and it is, let me just feel to make sure it's on the front pulley. Put your finger down there, follow the belt down, and then you should be able to see or feel where it is on the front pulley. There's a front pulley just there, and that is on the pulley there as well, so that's good. So that's all connected, okay? Which is what we want to see. Yeah, see that spin in there? That tells me it's on the pulley, okay? So that's good. So, right, okay, so I, yeah, so I found the problem. Right, I'm gonna try and show you the reason why. And now, if I bring my light in, right, right at the very, very top, I'm trying to, do this a bit cack handedly. I'm trying to get a light in there if I can, which will help. Let's put the light up in there. That's better. Now we can see what we're doing. Right. See that just there? There's a little tiny hole. See it? There should be a little tiny roll pin in there. And you remember when I tapped the top of the cog, the cog um, moved down. What happens is, is this cog, if that roll pin is not in there, uh, this shaft goes up and it comes out of the housing just down in here. I can now try and simulate it by literally lifting this up. Uh, I'm going to get a purchase somewhere there. Yeah, hang on. There. That gearbox will actually lift. There you go. See it lift? It's coming out of this housing. There's a little tiny shaft just in here. Just there. A little tiny shaft. And uh, that just sits in there. And what happened is that pin snapped just there, time at the bar, that pin snapped and the shaft has gone up, come out of its housing and the, when I tapped it back it's, it's realigned it. So all it is literally should be a little tiny fix on that pin just there. Okay, so I should have some roll pins, I did order some a while back. Let's have a little look ski. Uh, key weights. Uh, shrink wrap, split pins. I know I have some. Roll pins. There you go. Never have enough. So all we've got to do, generally they just snap off. That's come right out that one. So all we've got to do is find a roll pin. I'm guessing it'd be something like that. Now I call them roll pins. Is that what they call them on here? Uh, have a look. What do they call them on here? Yeah, rolls. M6 rolls. And these are literally just a pin with a slit in them. See that? Got a little slit in them. All we do is, that's going to go 
in that little hole up there. So that's all we've got to do. So I've just got to find the right size fitting one. And then what I do with a pair of pliers or grips is gently just give it a, give it a, a tweeze, get a tweak in as you're putting it in, and then you've got to punch it in. Once they're in place, um, they'll be good to go. So you can crimp the end. These, these are high tension steel, these are. You can crimp the end just to bend it in, just a touch, like so. And then slot it into the hole, and that should be enough. Okay, so for obvious reasons, that's going to be quite hard to get that in there with all your hands in there and all the rest of it and try and uh, squeeze it in. What you don't want to do is squeeze out in a vice, okay? So what I um, found a last sort of trick for is get one of these small little tiny adjustable uh, little tiny um, screwdrivers that fits in there just lovely and look at the nice little collar you've got now so now you, what you can do is put that in the hole and then gently tap that with a hammer and that will drift in your um your roll pin and then you, what you'll be able to do is then retract your screwdriver back out and then get a punch and push it in so let me drift it in quickly and i'll come back and just to prove my method to my madness is not is not madness, there's my screwdriver, and as you can see, I've just I get you guys in the best I can. It's a bit tricky to get you pointed up in the right direction. But as you can see, right up the top now, I can get my screwdriver. The, uh, the pin is now nearly in place. It's not all the way in yet, it's just there. But now with that little tiny screwdriver, you see, I was able to get that into place, drift it in, and now you can put a punch behind that and uh, send it all the way home where it needs to be. So, nice little tip for you, nice and simple. Okay, I've put a light up in here as well, so you can see a bit better as well. So now you can see um, the pin is now in place and drifted in as it should be, and it's that side of a washer. So as I say, if you can use that little tiny screwdriver trick I just showed you, that will save you about half an hour, okay? Um, just be a bit gentle when you attract it, but apart from that, it'll come out lovely. So that hopefully is a reason why this little lawnmower um, started playing up in the first place. So what we need to do now is hook up all the um, all the chain stuff again, get it all hooked up, and it's all going to be governed by this tensioner spring just here, which I shall show you very, very shortly. So what we do first off is we'll put the shroud back on um, and what have you. Put that back on, um, and then we can start to... Uh, Retension up this um, this drive system, and uh, we should be good to go. So one simple little, probably about fifty p roll pin, um, was all that stops this this um, nine hundred pound machine from working and stopping someone from earning earning a living. So um, yeah, don't forget that little trick. Good trick that is. Um, I thought that myself. Um, didn't see it anywhere else. Just used, sort of used my initiative best I could. So, um, yeah, so we get the cover on. Uh, that's what I go in there. And this little bit here lines up in here, see? In this little slot there. That lines up into there. That all goes up. That all sits into there. So now you can get your engine bolts on. Let's get some, some, bits, some bits and pieces up, some bits and bobs. That one goes in there. Goes in there. Let's nick them up. What we got on there? That's like a ten. Uh, be a fourteen. There's no thirteen. We don't, we don't do thirteens. Should be a fourteen. Yeah. So fourteen there. That'd be a twelve then. Now the tricky one is this fella. You may have to slacken all that back off again. There's a there's a bolt in here. Let me show you where it goes. It goes down in here, okay? So it sits in there. There's a nut, a captive nut, or not captive, it just sits in there. If you don't have it lined up, you, you, I could be there for about an hour doing these, okay? So you may have to slacken these engine bolts back off ever so slightly. So what I do is I look over top of it, try and line up, make sure we get the right socket on first. It should be a 10 on there. Yeah, it is. Get it all lined up first, the way you want it. And just when you think you've got it, you think you've got it. But I'll tell you, these can be a bit of a pickle. So slide it in. And then very gently, 
the first time. They can be an absolute pig. Um, so that's that done, that's that done. We can now, um, I want to put the blade back on because I want to um, test the, uh, the drive, don't I, before we uh, put it in for a service. So um, there's no point mucking about I'm trying to start the engine up. So I've got a little spacer on these. That goes on there, doesn't matter which way up that goes. Little 14, uh, two 14 mil bolts. There you go on there. Just mind your fingers when you do is I've pinched my fingers on these before. Held, and, held the back of the old uh, the, the blade button. It pinched me old fingy, so go careful. So just put it on there where it needs to be. I mean, just make sure your fingers are up on, the, on this side of the old blade, not underneath there, because you've pinched them in. I've cracked them in there before. It did half hurt too. Go that time. Not too tight, enough to come back off for um, the old blade though, anyway. Then we're told about that tensioner spring. We'll do that next. That's this little cookie just here. So this one, let me bring you right in so you can see I'm in my chair. Right, so this spring, it can be a bit of a pickle. Now it hooks onto here, just like so. And then it's got to go up and it's got to sit onto there like so, right? Well, you would think that'd be easy, right? Well, once you put that chain on first, so the chain's got to go on, otherwise you'll never get it on. The chain goes on first, make sure it's on the top pulley at the top. Bring it all up in line, on the bottom one as well. That's it, that's it all there. That all now sits on there beautiful, right? That's all on. But now, you've got to now put that on. Bob, bob. Not as easy, eh? Not as easy. I'll show you a little trick. Right, so to put this tensioner spring on, as I say, it came a bit fiddly. What I like to do is I like to put it on the top end first, okay? Then get a bit of an old pull cord, which you should all learn about. Take it underneath and hook it onto that spring. Alright, like so. And then pull that spring down, pull your tension arm in slightly, pull the spring down, hook it up. Now just hold it there. Right, that ain't going nowhere for a minute. Get a pair of long nose um, pliers or something similar. Keep hold of that, that spring. With the pull cord and just give it a little bit of a little bit of motivation and you'll find it will just slip into place so bring it all the way back in there that's it and then give it a bit of a tweak just about there keep tension on it i tell you it's our pickle and you do fight with these for a little while. But I've found, give it a bit of attention now, a bit of, up, bit, of, bit of upwards motion as well. There you go, on like that. And now that's that tensioner pulley now on, just make sure um, when you uh, look at it all, that it is all engaged properly, because that actually, the chain isn't actually in place. Around the side here, that's actually dropped, that pulley, it's not where it should be. So don't just put it straight on and walk away. It's come around the side here, and this chain is only on half of that tensioner pulley. So that's what come back off. Which is no easy thing. Trust me. Okay. So when you put it on, I'll show you one more time, just for those who are hard of seeing. Put the old chain on, make sure the chain's on center of the pulley so it grabs it to so get your chain fitted first pull cord on very windy today pull cord on then drop it down below keep on that pulley yeah that's on this time as it slips down past and it's no good for nothing then That's now on that on that pulley as well. So that is exactly where it needs to be. So what we're going to do now, get you guys out of the way for a bit. You guys have a coffee over there. Um, we've just got to put the cover back on. Um, two little tiny screws. And then I'm going to sit the engine down for a little while just because it's a uh, overhead valve job in which all the oil goes back to where it wants to go 
before we continue much further. Mm. These are well packaged, these old models, I tell you, they, they uh, we're now going to lock it all up. That's it. That's better. That's it. A little metal washer goes on. Onto there. A little 10 mil onto there. And then two Phillips screws, remember them ones? They're the ones we took off, took off first. They go out the back here, next to a height adjustment lever handle. Right, so I won't be starting it up outside, it is absolutely blowing a hoolie, so I just want to fire it up very quickly, just to test the drive, make sure the drive cuts in and works. Um, and uh, then I can then get on and do another video on the service on this little baby. So what we're looking for is for the engine to start and then for the drive to, uh, to self-propel, you know, to, to do what it should do. So let's have a little look on the choke. drives exactly as it should do so uh, super happy with that so what we can now do is um, end this video and we'll um, get on and do um, part two on this which should be a full service okay Honda HRX 476 now all up and running exactly how it should do or driving at least as it should do it's not running as it should do because it needs a service um, but literally all it was was one of these just um, I got these from Amazonian you can buy them you know, on eBay wherever uh, this is just a little multi pack of, uh, of roll pins good little selection um, and it's just one of these ones. Like I say, don't squeeze it in the vise. Use a little tiny screwdriver trick I showed you. Um, that works really well. And because those little screwdrivers for doing up like, glasses and what have you, uh, different thicknesses, they, they're perfect just for holding the pin in place so you, you can give it a bit of a tap so it bites. Once it bites, put a punch on it and away you go. So that fix, you know, in all, in all, in all realism, um, probably costs about, I don't know, about 50p for one roll pin. Um, but the work involved to get in there and it took a little while to um, punch that punch that um, roll pin into place you guys saw it in real time or you know in, in edited time took a couple of seconds uh, but in real time about 15 minutes just to just get into place and um with my size of my hands trying to get in there is ridiculous so but anyway it's done so um my mate luke should be super happy with that um so thank you very much for joining this episode of mixed mo's if you did enjoy um give us a thumbs up show appreciation um and uh, don't forget to hit the old um, subscribe button whack your bell and set notifications to all that way you'll be told that when i've done a video or two on my saturday night weekly live stream which starts at 6 p.m uk time um, so thank you very much for joining this episode of Mixed Mo's. Hope to see you all again soon. Look after each other, stay safe, and but don't forget, more importantly, take it easy.